piece of information that I'd like to get, as long as I have the oscilloscope still hooked up, is the same thing that I got with the batteries and with those smaller capacitors. So what I'm going to do is set the rising edge trigger on the oscilloscope here at 12.8 volts and going to start the car. So what I should see is the dip as the capacitors are drawn down from the starter and then I should see the charge from it and I'm hopefully going to get a good idea if I have any major AC ripple issues. When I did it with the smaller capacitor banks I was seeing more ripple but I now have these semi-permanently installed. I have clean connections so I'm hoping that I won't see these issues with the large capacitors and the good connections. But we will see. Well, I got the waveform here. Uh, my trigger point wasn't quite right because it actually bounced up before I started it, but I still did manage to capture basically everything that I was looking for here. So I will save the waveform and look at it on the computer. So the last things that I'm going to get with this is going to be I'm going to start the car and measure the voltage with an AC coupled so I can see how much ripple I'm getting with just the capacitors and then I'm going to connect the small battery that I have in parallel and hopefully I will have less ripple than what I had with the original battery so I don't have anything to worry about but we will see so we'll just turn the scope on in AC coupling mode and start it up and see if I can trigger on the waveform So I'm going to start up the car, it's going to show the AC ripple while it's running with the capacitors, and I'm actually just going to hook up the battery and see if we can see any real difference um, between having that small battery connected or not. Well, it was really hard to tell if a whole lot of anything changed, so I'm guessing whether that small battery is in there or not isn't going to have a big impact on it. But I'm going to compare the original battery to what I'm getting now, and it looks to me like it'll probably be less ripple, which means I shouldn't have anything to worry about damaging the electronics in this car running it like this. But I'll double check and we'll see. So looking at the AC ripple that I originally measured with the batteries is what I have shown here. 
And essentially, you can kind of get an idea looking at how high it is. This is set at 50 millivolts per division and 10 millisecond divisions. And the reading that I took with the Maxwell capacitors can be seen here. This is the same 50 millivolt division and the same 50 millisecond divisions on the oscilloscope. So it appears that I actually have less ripple with running the capacitors. Also in the video when I attached the battery there was no huge difference whatsoever so I'm not real worried about how I'm going to connect the battery whether I use a resistor um, or whether I put it directly in parallel or if I use a relay to connect and disconnect it depending on the load situations so it looks to me like I actually should have a more stable voltage than what I originally had with the batteries again going back to the original information that I got when I actually had the battery in the car. This was um, the single shot capture of starting the car with the battery when the battery had already been fully charged. I had it on a charger for probably four or five hours and made sure that it had stopped taking any large amount of current. Um, basically we have the vehicle with the ignition off, turn the ignition on, slight dip in voltage as it puts a load on the battery the heavy dip in the voltage is the inrush current to the starter turns over and starts and they're pretty much immediately flat lines out at 14.4 area for voltage basically uh, you can see I have about one second of starting and there isn't any real heavy load on it which isn't to be which isn't surprising because the uh, battery was fully charged and that was how I wanted to check it now when I have these larger capacitors in here originally I had done this with smaller ones with this 500 farad capacitor bank what I get is a steady voltage obviously when the car is off I turn on the ignition the voltage drops down from the running lights and I always did all these tests with the the heater motor on high turns over for about that one second area and then you can see here that each one of these is a second division so I have about one two three four five six seven seconds that it runs where it actually has the voltage below 14 volts this line right here is the full 14 volt mark so you can see that that's the length of time that it takes and it's actually putting a full load on the alternator before it actually gets up above 14 volts and it's probably a second or two afterwards before it stabilizes so even with these large capacitors um, going from starting them in a normal start condition not when they're absolutely at the bottom of the area where they can start I'm still looking at 10 maybe 15 seconds where you're actually going to put a full load on the alternator I tend to think that this isn't going to really have any real impact on the length of life the alternator will see but I could be wrong um, if anyone has any information on that that would suggest that I'm incorrect please let me know hopefully you found this interesting and thanks for watching